Recently, a driver pulling cargo at Yantian Port in Shenzhen posted a video showing the port densely packed with vacant trucks without a person in sight. Unoccupied containers piled up all over the yard, making it look very desolate and silent. Just two years ago, the port ranked fourth in the world in terms of container throughput. Last year, Alpha Liner, an international shipping consultancy and analyst company, published a list of the top 30 container throughputs in 2021, with China occupying 10 spots on the list. According to statistics. The top three container throughput rankings are Shanghai Port, Singapore Port, and Ningbo Zhoushan Port, with Yantian Port in Shenzhen in fourth place. And also in the top thirty are Guangzhou Port number five, Qingdao Port number six, Tianjin Port number eight, Hong Kong Port number ten, etc. However, in just two years, China's foreign trade export has changed dramatically, according to Radio Free Asia. The ports of Shanghai and Ningbo Beilun are also deserted, with container truck drivers and employees almost all gone. A Shanghai port terminal operator said, "The terminals are full of empty containers, many of which are now piled up in Taichung, Jiangsu Province, several dozen kilometers away, a sight not seen for many years. We rarely work overtime now. In the past, when we worked overtime." We usually worked 12 hours and rested 12 hours, but now we work 12 hours and rest 24 hours. According to Container Exchange, a global platform for container logistics, the CAX index, also known as Container Availability Index for the Port of Shanghai, is 0.64. The CAX index is a measure of the inbound and outbound value of incoming containers and departing containers. When the CAX index is greater than 0.5, It means that the number of inbound containers is greater than the number of outbound containers, easily leading to the accumulation of empty containers in the port. In the past, when the pandemic was serious, the CAX index of Shanghai Port was less than 0.1. The data of Shanghai Port showed that in January this year, the total cargo throughput of the port was 43.04 million tons. Which was about five million tons less than that in January 2019. Not only Shanghai, empty containers are piling up in major national ports such as Guangzhou. At the same time, the prices of containers have all been greatly reduced. Miss Xiao, a foreign trade business in Shenzhen, Guangdong Province, said in an interview that the industry chain has shifted from China to East Asia due to the impact of Sino-U.S. relations. Lockdowns and pandemic control measures. Foreign orders have been cancelled, and investment moved to Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand. Therefore, foreign trade companies have to think of other ways to keep afloat to make up for the loss in the container shipping business. A Chinese blogger by the name of Nei Wu shared on his official WeChat account that he had a conversation with a friend who works in packing and trailering at Shanghai Port. According to his friend. Foreign trade exports became prosperous after 2019 due to the coronavirus outbreak abroad and relatively better pandemic control domestically. However, starting in the new year of 2022, and especially after the implementation of zero COVID management in Shanghai, his friend's business began to slow down. Since June of last year, business has been declining even further. After the new year in 2023, the situation became worse. Almost all of his warehouses were empty. Workers were loitering around doing nothing, with business being less than ten percent of what it used to be after the Chinese New Year holidays. His friend's company originally had its own fleet of vehicles, but now they are abandoned. For cargo delivery, he would rather hire someone externally because the cost of maintaining their own fleet is too high, such as the driver's salary, the various vehicle expenses, even second-hand car dealers are losing money. It is reported that the issue of empty containers in Chinese ports emerged in the second half of last year. On December fifth of last year, the official website of the China Ports and Harbors Association released a report on the monitoring and analysis of port production and operation, which stated that in November the throughput of loaded trade containers at the eight major hub ports decreased by nearly ten percent year on year. While the throughput of empty containers for foreign trade increased by nearly 24% year on year, and in Zhejiang, Jiangsu coastal areas, 
Most companies rely on foreign trade exports to survive, but the damage to business operations from zero COVID policy had become apparent. Many large enterprises laid off employees and small enterprises closed down. Shenzhen, once the most economically active city in China, is losing momentum as a large number of companies relocate or close down. On February 22nd, a video uploaded by a netizen in Shenzhen showed that a factory was recruiting employees based on age, and those waiting for interviews were all young men and women. A recruiter shouted loudly to the standing applicants, We are only recruiting people born after 1986. Those who are before 1986 can leave. This is the recruitment site of a company in Dongguan, Guangdong province, where someone in the video is shouting $9 an hour. That is $1.30 USD an hour. Many young people can be seen in the video waiting to apply for jobs. Dongguan is another manufacturing base in Guangdong province where a large number of foreign trade enterprises have set up factories. According to some netizens, in another economically active region in the Yangtze River Delta, over 90% of export processing enterprises have stopped recruiting after this year's Lantern Festival. Even if there are vacancies in the enterprises, hundreds of people will apply for every 10 positions available. In Jiangsu and Changsha, Many enterprises no longer even recruit daily paid temporary workers. In southwest region of Chongqing and Yunnan, most enterprises are scaling down production to maintain operations. On TikTok, some people made a list of the top 10 electronics factories suspending recruitment, including Changsha BYD, Apple, Changshuo Technology, Suzhou Luxie Precision, and so on. When media called to inquire, HR at Chengdu Foxon said that they only recruited young people who had just graduated from high school with a basic salary of 2,000 yuan plus overtime wages and night shift subsidies. Sometimes it is 5,500 to 6,000 yuan a month with no rent allowance. There are 296 million migrant workers in China and they are the driving force behind China's export economy, making China the world's factory. Although they do not have the same job stability as white-collar workers, in the 20 years since China joined the World Trade Organization, they have been living a relatively secure life, which is much better than the farming they used to do in the countryside or working part-time in small local towns. But after this pandemic, many migrant workers have returned to their hometowns and are no longer willing to come back to work. Factors such as China's tough zero-COVID policy and shifting of the industrial chain have caused shutdowns of large numbers of small and medium-sized enterprises with a steady rise in unemployment. Bloomberg reports that migrant workers are one of the groups most affected by the Chinese Communist Party's zero-COVID policies and that the zeroing out has put factories in a continuous lockdown. Workers may go months without pay or being forced to work in closed-loop conditions without contact with anyone outside the factory for long periods of time and separated from their families. Many factory owners and recruiters in Guangzhou, a major economic city in the south, said large portions of migrant workers were reluctant to return to work after the Chinese New Year holiday. This has exacerbated long-term structural problems in China's labour market. Before the zero-COVID policy, the labour force was already shrinking due to an ageing population and young people were less willing to work in low-paying labour-intensive industries. Tao Ning, a recruiter in the Haizhou district, said the garment factory where she has worked for more than a decade had more than 30 employees before the Chinese New Year holiday, but only 10 returned to work after the holiday. Their reluctance is understandable, Tao Ning said. Imagine leaving your hometown to go to a big city, not being able to afford buying a property with your lifetime salary, 
Living in an old tiny room, sharing a toilet with many people, and working twelve hours a day, the only goal is to make and save as much money as possible," says Tanin. But then the lockdown happened. You don't know how long there will be no wages at all. The hesitancy of migrant workers to return to factories suggests that China's economic outlook remains uncertain. Meanwhile, consumer confidence remains near record lows. Auto sales continue to plummet. A real estate is far from recovering. While sectors such as restaurants and tourism rebounded during the Chinese New Year, they remain well below pre-pandemic levels. At the same time, foreign investors are accelerating their withdrawal from China. The European Union Chamber of Commerce in China released its 2023-2024 Shanghai Recommendation on February 14, calling on the Chinese Communist government to restore the confidence of foreign companies. And repair the conflicted international relations. As a result of last year's pandemic control, up to 92% of European businesses suffered revenue losses due to supply chain disruptions, indirectly hitting Shanghai's businesses. The Chamber's business confidence poll released last year showed that only 12% of European member companies surveyed were willing to set up their headquarters in Shanghai, and 500 European companies have already moved to Singapore to set up their headquarters. The European Union Chamber of Commerce estimates that 25% of Germans will leave Shanghai after the end of the city's closure, while French and Italians will each see a 20% drop, and that multinational teachers in many international schools in Shanghai saw a 40% turnover last year, much higher than the approximate 30% turnover rate in 2021, and the relatively low 15% turnover rate before the coronavirus outbreak. The European Union Chamber of Commerce has 1,800 member companies, with more than 620 in Shanghai alone, accounting for one third of the total. Foreign companies play a pivotal role in the Shanghai economy, according to Bettina Schoenbehazing, vice president of the chamber. Foreign companies account for 25% of Shanghai's economic growth, 33% of the city's taxes. 20% of the city's jobs and 66% of the city's domestic and foreign sales, and 30% of industrial output. The foreign investment withdrawal is not only talk. Due to epidemic and economic uncertainty, some multinational companies have already moved their supply chains out of China, especially after Shanghai fell into an unprecedented prolonged lockdown last year. On Semi, a global automotive chip maker announced last April that it was closing its global distribution center in Shanghai and moving to Singapore. Not only Shanghai is seeing a significant withdrawal of foreign capital, other provinces and cities also have the same problem. Apple decided to move part of its iPhone 14 production line to India, and the Apple Watch production line will also be moved to Vietnam. Prior to that, Japan's Toshiba and South Korea's Samsung. Closed several factories in China last year and moved their production lines to Vietnam. With a new round of U.S. sanctions against China coming up, more and more foreign companies are considering withdrawing. Japanese electronics parts maker Koasira is shifting production to other regions and is increasing its domestic production capacity significantly. Koasira is an important component of the global chip supply chain. The company has a 70% global market share in the field of ceramic chip components. The company's president Hideo Tanimoto said in an interview with the Financial Times, "In the U.S.-China technology war, the business model of producing in China and exporting abroad is no longer viable. China is no longer suitable to continue as the world's factory." When talking about the U.S. ban on high-end chips against China. He said that if chip equipment manufacturers stop supplying products to China, it will definitely affect the company's orders. Under the U.S. restrictions, Corsair products can only be manufactured in China and sold in China. It cannot be exported overseas. The company has now moved production of photocopiers for the U.S. market from China to Vietnam and Thailand. 